So, welcome, everybody. Uh, such an honor to welcome you all. We have a, more than a thousand people in this room from over 50 countries, uh, and it's, it's great to have you all here. Thank you. So, yeah, this is awesome. We have a, a full packed program for two days. Uh, we have talks here, we have another stage with talks about technology, use cases, um, we have a lot of workshops, we also have a comedy program here, so this is going to be really, really cool today. So, uh, uh, but not before we thank our sponsors, and to specifically mention our platinum sponsors, Microchip and Semtech, thanks for making this all possible, and of course, our ecosystem partner, the Lore Alliance, and many, many companies that making this event ha uh, happen. Hand of applause for all the sponsors. And of course, all the amazing speakers. We have got all the LoRaWAN industry leaders here in the house sharing uh, the latest and greatest of what they're doing and how they are making new products and building the market. So, looking back 12 months and looking at the market, uh, if you look at, look at the global LP WAN market, uh, three independent researchers <coughs> state that there's a 100% year-on-year growth that's seen at, uh, at the moment and that is projected in the near future. Uh, as a LoRa Alliance, we announced uh, last week that there are more than 100 operators around the world that use LoRaWAN in more than 100 countries. So this 100% year-on-year growth, we also see in the LoRaWAN ecosystem. And we also see that in the Things Network, in the whole ecosystem. So last year when we held a conference in January, we had 30,000 accounts. Today, we have 60,000. Last year, we had 3,000 gateways on our network. Today, we have 6,000 gateways on our network. So we, have, we are consistent with this 100% year-on-year growth. Last year, we routed 5.5 billion messages, and that is just traffic uh, from all over, the, all over the world. And that means that ubiquitous connectivity is here. It works. LoRaWAN is really all around us today. So. The technology is nice, but what's very interesting is the diversity in use cases. So, so you see all kinds of different ver verticals that are applying LoRaWAN for efficiency or for, uh, uh, for profit. Um, what's also interesting is that there is a diversity geographically. So um, the Things Network is now active in more than 100 countries. We have uh, users in over 100 countries. Uh, so, so it's interesting that, that it's, it's being used all around. So we can say that LoRaWAN is here to stay. Exactly. But this is just the start, right? So this exponential growth is very interesting, but um, yeah, doubling something that's maybe an absolute scale not that big is still really uh, uh, not that big again. Yeah, and those five and a half billion messages that we routed last year, if you, if you put that in perspective, if you compare that, for example, with the Amsterdam Internet Exchange here, they route that many packets only in three seconds. So even though LoRaWAN, we see the exponential growth, the real promise of the big Internet of Things with tens of billions of devices generating a lot of traffic, we still have that ahead of us, and that is super exciting. So, so what's holding us back? So, so where does this big IoT promise, where does the billions uh, of devices? And um, let's, let's illustrate a picture. Uh, and let's go to a place where they're trying to make a smart parking spot. So that looks like this, right? With five people looking at a hole in the ground, putting in a sensor they never seen. Um, and this is quite an operation, right? So let's just run you through things you need. You need to get the device, you need to inject the security, you need to dig a hole, you need to calibrate the device to know like, what the, the surrounding uh, situation is to detect the car. You need to check, like, is it operating at the longevity uh, 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 configuration so that you don't have to go back and change the battery. Uh, and, and, and God forbid that, that, that you have to up the, update the firmware. Um. So that's not going to scale. So if you add all this, $385, uh, maybe you do that with a small POC uh, on, a, on a parking lot somewhere.
but you don't, you're, you're not going to scale that to a thousand parking spots, and especially not to a whole city. So this is not scalable, and uh, we, need to, we need to find a solution here. So how do we solve this? We need to rethink security. We, we really see this as a security solution. We need to rethink security, and we need to design this solution uh, in really a scalable way from in the architecture. And that means that we should get, really get rid of this. So LoRaWAN uh, security is arranged by symmetric cryptography. And that means that you need to have the same key in the device and in the cloud. That is inevitable. But what you have today, if you buy a sensor, you go online, you go to a web shop, you buy a sensor, you get it delivered, you very often get the keys, either in an Excel file or uh, on a note. And imagine how many people have seen these keys, to, to how many people they are exposed. You know, it could be the, the person that packaged your sensor, uh, the person that uh, printed the, uh, the note or the invoice, um, the mailman, uh, maybe the, the keys are even printed on the sensors. Um, that doesn't scale. And if you, if you have the keys on the invoice, even your bookkeeper has access to your keys. So we really should get rid of this. And also, there's no way to change the keys. Uh, what happens if you, if you transfer ownership of a device uh, to, a new, to a new owner. If, if sensors are installed in a building and the building gets a new owner, what do you do then? So this is something that we need to find a solution for. And together with Microchip, uh, we created a key provisioning service that, uh, uh, that's solving this problem, and we created a little video. For yes. At The Things Industries, we put security at the core of our design, processes, and architecture. The Internet of Things industry owes their users a relentless dedication in keeping their data secure. This is our vision on IoT security. Internet of Things security is about authenticity, integrity, and confidentiality of data. Authenticity is about that you know exactly which device you receive the data from. Integrity is about that data has not been tampered with. And confidentiality is about that data is only readable by the parties that should have access to that data. In IoT, we achieve this by encrypting and signing the data between the device and the cloud with keys, and ensuring that these keys are only in the hands of the right entities. As long as you know that you trust the parties that have your keys, all is good. In IoT, this can become very challenging. When you manufacture 100,000 devices offshore, you can choose to trust your manufacturer with your keys and send it to them so they can be provisioned. Or you can do the key injection in-house, which then would add significant additional costs. This means that doing IoT security at scale can be very challenging. We created a product and a service that delivers secure join, secure communication, and secure key provisioning for LoRaWAN networks. The product is a new microchip, ATECC608A. It is a secure element which stores root keys for securely joining any LoRaWAN network. At the Things Industries, we provide a hosted LoRaWAN join server that's included in the product. This join server is compatible with any LoRaWAN public and private network. You can migrate from the Things Industries join server to any join server by a secure rekeying procedure. The way it works is that the root keys are injected into the chip in a highly secure facility at Microchip. It is physically impossible to read the root key from the chip after it is inserted. When the device joins, the chip generates device session keys from the root key, the same way the join server does it. Creating a key pair that is identical, yet without any physical exchange between the device and the cloud. The root keys can be managed by the Things Industries or by a key management party of choice. Basically, we are revolutionizing LoRaWAN security by removing the need for key provisioning, pushing more secure and more efficient LoRaWAN deployments. Get your The Things Industries secure element today at Microchip.
and start building scalable, secure LoRaWAN solutions now. So here's Xavier from uh, Microchip, one of the masterminds for building this, uh, this partnership. Hand of applause for Xavier from Microchip. Thank you, thank you. So Xavier, who are you? Can you introduce yourself? So I'm uh, Xavier Bignale. I'm part of the Microchip Security Group. Cool. And why is this, why is this so important? From because you're, you have a security background, I have a wireless networking background. Why is this, from a security perspective, so important? Well, there is two main aspects, right? Like, like the presentation is saying, the first thing is the problem, right? Having access to this key. If I have access to this key, I can impersonate the device. Then I, can try, I can start to, to, to own and control the transaction coming from the device. So we need to remediate to that. The first thing is we're going to protect this key, isolate this key for, from as many things as possible. The second thing, presentation is saying a keyword, the whole OR architecture is sitting on a shared key architecture. And the challenge is a logistic challenge, right? How do we distribute those keys into all the millions of devices that are deployed across the world? So that's key provisioning. So let, let's say I'm a device maker and I want to uh, create 10,000 devices. Um, wh what does this solution mean for my key provisioning? Well, the, uh, I liked your illustration of when you show the paper with the, the key there. It's literally a bunch of papers or Excel files. It's not a scalable distribution key model, right? So what we've done today, we pre-configured the secure element with all the, the right policies to do the right calls with already the keys. And pre prior to that, we had a, a, a main key agreement, key ceremony with TTN in both of our backends, the uh, microchip IT backends and the backend of, of TTI. Now the credentials are, are, in, are inside the secure element, and then we can ship all over the world and just use the traditional logistic supply chain. Did yeah. you really say key ceremony? It's like a sort, yeah. sort of wedding or something? Yes. It's kind of what we did three months ago. Okay. Yeah, we did it three months ago. Yeah, already it, was, it was really fun. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was all, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it, so the way it works is we have, uh, uh, Microchip has a hardware secure module in ACSM. We also have one. Uh, we have the same key there. That's a key ceremony to exchange these keys. And we operate uh, a joint server. And that's a, a standard component in, in, in LoRaWAN space that allows you to activate these devices. And these devices can be activated uh, on any network. So it's, it's just a joint server. Uh, and it comes uh, included in the price if you buy, uh, if you buy these chips. It's, we have one year included um, uh, joint service. So, um, yeah, that's really cool. And, and, and uh, it's a secure element, so we have, we have our part number. So if you, if you buy these, you have to make sure you buy the right part number, right? Uh, but it's just an ECC 608 chip. Can you, can you tell a little bit more about what else you can do with, with this uh, secure element? No, absolutely. I mean, in, anything connected, right? You have other uh, basic security practices that you want to make sure you implement. They are involving keys. Uh, I'm relating to secure boot, you know, verify the boot sequence of a device. You also want to verify an over-the-air updates when it's a new software, and that also use a key to verify. So those are other use cases you can benefit yeah, that's from really using cool. map. Awesome. And you're going to talk about this more? Yes. What so time? 11.30, same place, same guy. We'll go through the details. Very cool. And there are workshops? Workshop uh, today, I believe tomorrow. We also have a booth uh, in the center place there over there. So come and talk to our experts. We also have a wireless expert with the Star for the Star 34. Um, yeah, we're all here. Awesome. Thanks, Xavier. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Great. So, so, so maybe we can. Uh, like we were trying to solve a problem here, right? That the problem of the, the the high total cost of ownership of that smart parking lot installation. So, so how is this solving the the business case then? So this key provisioning. Um, if you go back to that, to that total cost of ownership slide and you see there you have to inject the keys, uh, that is costly. Um, that is one step that we, that we cut away in this whole chain. So you don't have to think about key provisioning anymore. You just buy a reel of crypto chips, of secure elements, and they are provisioned already. Uh, you get a file from Microchip, um, and that file you can upload in our TTI joint server, and that claims your devices, and that makes the link uh, in, in, with your account. Another way to reduce the, the cost is that um, uh, because of the secure boot, uh, you can actually uh, do uh, firmware updates in a secure way. 
And that means that if you have firmware updates, and, and there's going to be another presentation about firmware updates today also by ARM, um, you can actually patch uh, issues that you have with your device. So instead of the need to throw them away, uh, you can send a security update, for example, to your devices. And um, uh, yeah, so, so those, that, that really reduces the, the, the total cost of ownership okay. from, a, from a security perspective. I think that's, that's super important. Great. Yeah. So we are total cost of ownership already with $100 down, right? Yeah. So we're, OK, perfect. Cool. So let's continue. Yeah, so uh, 2018, we have seen a lot of proof of concepts. We have seen a lot of proof of concepts fail. We have seen a lot of proof of concepts succeed. But we're, uh, there's a main theme is that a lot of companies are actually start, uh, struggling with the hard, hardware complexity. And what they say, hardware is hard. So um, what we Building did, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> what we did was uh, we tried to solve that problem. Uh, and we created a product. Uh, uh, which we're launching today, uh, which we think would, would be able to solve that problem. Building hardware is hard, and therefore building an Internet of Things end-to-end -end solution is even harder. The history of computing shows that every time we put an abstraction layer on top of hardware, adoption of the hardware platform gets accelerated. Like the operating system for the first computers, App stores for smartphones, and cloud management platforms for data centers. We can apply this concept to the Internet of Things by introducing software defined Internet of Things, creating IoT devices that can be programmed with apps to service specific use cases, yet leaving the hardware untouched. We present the generic node. A LoRaWAN device packed with sensors and features so it is capable of supporting many use cases with a single device and just one single supply chain. Whether you want to build an application for cold chain, retail, smart offices, or smart city, you can build that app with ARM's Embed OS and provision it to the generic node from the cloud. The app is provisioned remotely over LoRaWAN on deployment through simple messages or firmware updates over the air, while the device is already in the field. This means that from production all the way to installation, it is the same device. This brings immense economies of scale advantages, which allows us to bring this product at a disruptively low price point, yet with short delivery times around the world. of this generic node, you can find the microchips SAMR34, the LoRa radio, and MCU packed in one system in a package. It can measure temperature with high accuracy, detect touch, water, and proximity, movement in all directions, and light sensitivity. Security is embedded through a secure element, allowing it to join any LoRaWAN network in the world that supports the latest specifications set by the LoRa Alliance. And it brings everything you expect from a solid LoRaWAN sensor node, long range and long livity, on a single standard AA battery. This product enables you to start building IoT solutions without the complexity and risk of hardware engineering and lets you focus on the software that makes the product unique. Get it now. So we were super... Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We thought you would love it. Yeah, we're super, super excited about this product. And um, the vision behind this is that the world uh, only has 20 million people that know how to program, of which only 1 million knows how to do something with hardware. So, so we can increase addressable market uh, times 20 by trying to remove the hardware from the equation. Yeah, exactly. And, and so 
This note comes with a lot of sensors, and so imagine the use cases you can drive with this single piece of hardware. And also imagine the use cases you cannot imagine yet, right? Also that. Okay. So these sensors, this note comes with these sensors. Um, you, can, you can do a lot of things. And actually, so the key features are, uh, it's end-to-end -end encrypted, so this note comes with the security solution uh, that we just presented. Uh, it, it supports firmware updates over the air. It's a low-power design. Uh, it comes with a standard replaceable AA battery. So we also solve the supply chain issue of, of uh, shipping batteries. Um, we have open development tools, uh, so uh, you, can, you can easily develop firmware yourself. And it's network agnostic. It's not, you don't have to use it on the Things Network or on a Things Industries private network. You can use it on any LoRaWAN network. So how to deploy it? We have two different ways to deploy it. The first is um, the zero hardware approach. So you just buy the generic node, and it comes pre-shipped uh, with some applications that can already fulfill uh, quite a lot of use cases. And you can activate these applications by sending a downlink message uh, from your application to your node to, to activate a, a specific application, for example, for uh, cold chain monitoring or um, a meeting room occupation, uh, things like that. So you really don't have to worry about the hardware. That's a zero hardware uh, deployment model. The other way to use this node is to build your own firmware. And so we, we chose uh, ARM Emmet OS as our development platform. Uh, they have a really nice uh, LoRaWAN stack also that's um, certified for EU and will be certified for other regions uh, very soon. And you can, you can program this device and you can debug the device with a debugger cable. Uh, but you can also uh, uh, buy the devices and uh, send your application through a firmware update over the air uh, to all the devices in the field. And you can do that throughout the lifetime of the node. So that's, um, that's really cool. Two ways to deploy it. One is without bothering with the hardware, and the other is just writing your own firmware. So we're doing this with a great set of partners, right? Well, this conference is also about let's build this market together. Uh, the design house is TWTG, uh, partnering with ARM with their open source uh, uh, operating system. Mark Tripp is the main silicon provider with, the, with both the secure element and the uh, system in a package. And RS Components is going to make sure that it's being shipped all around the world in, uh, uh, in US, EU, India, Japan, and uh, Australia later this year. So, if you want to join the Early Access program, we have today the first prototypes ready. We're inviting all product makers, all integrators, uh, anybody that wants to do something with this node to join the Early Access program and to start already developing the, uh, the applications before we start the mass production and have them available uh, this summer. So next, so we're, what's the next friction point? So, we're talking about 6,000 gateways. Um, there's like LoRaWAN connectivity all around us. And what you see is that it gets cheaper and cheaper to build this infrastructure. The, 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 the infrastructure um, uh, uh, resources are really becoming a commodity to, to create a network. Like it's almost getting almost free. And um, we have our, our own hardware. Uh, 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 and um, we created a, a gateway that was used for development and was used to get started, was easy to provision, lets you focus on building the use case. And we partnered with Gemtech to launch two new gateways. One is called the Things Indoor Gateway. Uh, it's packed uh, with a gateway provisioning protocol that's just been open sourced by Semtech. Uh, it's backed with a TTI network server with an SLA. Uh, and it's really for production use, so you can also like do run cloud scripts or scripts on the device if you want to do mass deployments, either in one location or bigger. Things industri industrial gateway is a rugged gateway for production. You can use outdoor, but it will be shipped with a eSIM for 3G and 4G, which can be activated remotely. So basically, this is giving a gateway to somebody, can put it up in a good place, and remotely, you can start managing the backhaul. And, um, uh, and we're super excited that we're launching this, these gateways around the world. 
it's even more exciting as that we're going to do this as an extremely disruptively low price point. I already see some exciting people there. So the indoor eight-channel gateway is going to be available for not even $70 in for one. So imagine what this would look like on scale. Including shipping. Yeah. yeah. So this is including shipping. Yeah. So the outdoor gateway is going to come for 400 euros. It's a rugged one, uh, industrial grade. Uh, uh, and this is going to be there later today. So let's have a, like a, uh, a look at, at what this indoor gateway uh, yeah, is about. So uh, we're super excited about this product, uh, uh, product. We think this can really uh, give, a, give a huge push to LoRaWAN by making this LoRaWAN connectivity a commodity and an abundance. And the exciting thing is that next Monday, they're going to be available at RS Online, and you can order them in the US and in Europe. That's, that's really cool. So we got the DNA, we got the devices, the network, and the applications. So let's put the internet in IoT. The internet in the old days, before there actually was the internet, there were a lot of small networks that were not connected together. And internet is really has become the dominant way of, of digital communication because it connected all these small networks together. And I'm, t I'm telling this story because LoRaWAN is actually the same thing today. We have uh, about 100 operated LoRaWAN networks in the world. There are a lot of private networks as well, but these are not connected yet. And we, need to, we really need to connect these networks to create one big internet-like LoRaWAN network. So we really need to bring the internet to LoRaWAN. And this is not just about uh, the TTN ecosystem. Uh, the Things Network is already one big network. If your device, um, or if, if you have an application in, in, in Europe and, you're, and you have uh, a gateways in the US, um, you can already uh, see your data everywhere because we already do peering from the start with the Things Network. But we also have around 3,000 um, gateways connected to our Things Industries uh, powered private networks. So what we want to do is we want to bring these networks together, and not only within the Things Network ecosystem, but also opening this up to other networks. And this can be networks that run an open source distribution, but also uh, networks that run a whole different network server stack. So what we built is a solution for this. And we call that the Packet Broker. IoT solutions consists of sensors and actuators on one side, and control systems and dashboards on the other side. In between are the gateways and network servers that provide connectivity. The security features of the IoT protocols enable any network to receive and route traffic to the target application, while the application data payload is still encrypted end-to-end. -end. And an open spectrum allows anybody to fetch the encrypted packets from the air and serve them to the network that knows the destination of the data if networks would collaborate. The solution PacketBroker.org provides is a neutral entity that allows any IoT network operator, big or small, to publish encrypted packets received by their network but intended for other networks at the same time allowing them to subscribe to encrypted packet streams for their own network. Packetbroker.org operates similar to existing internet exchanges while focusing on IoT data. The collaborative infrastructure of Packetbroker.org will lead to greater interoperability and thus greater adoption of open Internet of Things, where highly diverse IoT solutions can flourish. So the Packet Broker will be at the core of the Things Network, of our new generation V3 network. 
So we use the packet broker to exchange traffic between our public clusters, but also private clusters, and it's open also for other networks to, uh, to collaborate. So what's in it? Why, why is this so important? And actually, I also want to bring this to the end devices, because it's, this also is better for, for the battery of the end devices. And the way that works is that if your gateway, if your device is seen by many gateways, maybe also other gateways that are not connected to your own network, the adaptive data rate mechanism in LoRaWAN can drive the data rates up. So your device communicates faster, needs less time to communicate a message, and that, uh, that requires less power uh, for the end device. So it's, it's better for the battery. Second, it's, it's better for the uh, overall network performance. Higher data rates result in um, less channel utilization for all the gateways. So it's better for the, for the capacity. Third, there's redundancy. Uh, packets are received by multiple gateways. And also, this um, drives geolocation algorithms, because you can also gather more metadata uh, from other gateways uh, that make uh, geolocation more accurate. Fourth, there's control. You can, uh, you can own your infrastructure. You have your own gateways. You have your own network server, your own application server. Uh, everything is, is in your own domain, your own security domain. Everything can be controlled by you. But still, you can offload traffic that is not for your network to the packet broker, and you subscribe to traffic from the packet broker that is for your network, but that is received by other gateways. And there's no downside. Your gateways already receive everything from other networks, but now it's being dropped. And we, we really see that as a waste of resources. People put up gateways. Uh, they made the investment already to set up a gateway. So it's actually free to route this traffic to the right network. And this is also how the internet works and why the internet has become so powerful. So this is, we, we, we made a prototype this year. And what you see here is uh, traffic that we received on the Things Network public network that is not for the Things Network. So this is basically the, the, the other traffic that we see on the public network. So currently, we throw this away. But we rather work with partners all around the world. So not only with the big operators, but also with very small networks uh, to give the traffic to them and to make that available. And it also works the other way around. So we also we have this bidirectional exchange of data. So what we are doing, we are opening up the network for internet-like peering. So this is for the Things Network public network. Uh, as well as private networks. And this is an opt-in. So gateway owners can choose because it's, it's their gateway and it's their network. They can choose to opt-in. But we make this available for free. Uh, and we also invite other networks to join this initiative. So exciting stuff. So talking about uh, the technology, oh. we, have, we have one more. We have so many things to announce. Oh. It's, uh, <laughs> so uh, talking about technology, um, we are also launching uh, the Things Network V3. I have a presentation later today about this uh, at this stage. Um, but V3 is our, is our network stack that is designed for scale, that is designed for all the things that we talked about in this presentation. It's also designed for this interconnectivity, for uh, exchanging traffic between clusters. It's not only for the public network. It's not only for the Things Network community network, uh, but also for all kinds of private deployments. Because we think that LoRaWAN can be used in so many different ways uh, that we wanted to create one stack that could serve them all. Mm -hmm. oh, no. <laughs> Thanks. So talking about awesome stuff, um, let's have a look at this. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. We have ignition. Two and lift up. Yes, welcome. So, welcome, Thomas. Woo. Come over here. Come and set up the stage. So, um, for uh, for the people who don't know you, uh, who are you and what do you do? Hello, I'm Thomas Delcom. I'm from Lacuna Space. And we're going to fill the white gaps in the world. You've seen some awesome gateways for some awesome price, actually. But there are places where you cannot put a gateway. And that's where you're, we are going to help you by providing lower band connectivity over satellite. Cool. So your company is investing heavily in this lower band satellite thing. So, so what's happened like the last 12 months? We have done a lot. So last year, we had a demo here with a satellite at the Things Conference showing that we can actually have devices talk to a satellite. 
But there's a huge difference between having one device send a message to a satellite and serving thousands of devices. So we have been collaborating with Semtech closely on developing something that's going to scale. So there is a technology that is going to make thousands of devices in, over LoRaWAN communicate with a satellite. I'm not going to say anything about it, but I highly suggest you go to Nicolas Sonnen's talk in the morning, and he might share something interesting. Right after this, on this right. stage. Yeah. So, so you've been ha like your company has been investing heavily in building up this IP and making sure that this yeah, the ch technically challenging um, uh, uh, thing you're doing uh, is working. So, so how are you going to put this unique IP to, to work? So this year is all about deployment and scalability. So we have four launches scheduled to enable a real service that you all can use. And the other part of scalability is being open. We truly believe in open systems, and that's why we're here. We truly believe in the LoRaWAN ecosystem. It's not just a protocol, it's also, I would say, a mindset. And it's actually you, the fact that you are all here. So we're going to bring some LoRaWAN mindset to the satellite world, and that's a big change. You're already familiar with it, but the satellite world is not yet. And that also brings me to what we are going to do together. Because once the service is ready and we've done our testing, we really want to take the barrier away to do something with LoRaWAN over satellite. So we're going to open up the service when it's ready for three months for anybody on the Things Network to play with it, to experiment, unlimited, whatever you want to do, build your use cases, and then together we can make some awesome business over this system. What we do is just a perfect fit, what Johan just announced, the V3 peering, the packet broker. We will all be integrated with, with that, and it will be available to anybody to use. Wow, so everybody that's like, uh, has it, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks, this is amazing. Great, so everybody that has a Things Network account can feel a bit like an astronaut. That's a bit what you're saying, right? Exactly. For three months, for three everybody. months. For three, three months. months. <laughs> After that as well. Wow, amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah. End of applause to uh, Thomas. Thank you. So, um, we're nearing the end of our keynote. Uh, not before we have a, have a little message from China. Hi, my name is Yachun Wang. I'm the head of the IoT and Wireless Network Platform in Tencent. Unfortunately, I cannot attend the Things Network conference this time, but I'm sure it will be an amazing and successful IoT Developer Summit. I'm very happy to see the Tencent and the Things Network could work together to run a global and China IoT ecosystem together. By combining Tencent and the Things Network's technology, resources, and experience, we will advance and speed up the development of IoT developer community in China. I totally believe all the service provider, device maker, and also the vendors, and also their system integrator will benefit from a faster growing and open IoT ecosystem. I'm very excited and looking forward to this collaboration. Thank you. So yeah, we're, like, we're super excited to announce this partnership. Uh, basically, uh, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. Like our infrastructure runs on the cloud infrastructures to, uh, of Microsoft Azure, of uh, Amazon Web Services, and Google Cloud Platform. And uh, we're really happy that we will cr create, create an entire instance of both the community platform and the routing network in China together with Tencent. So, let's wrap this up. We talked about uh, making a smart parking lot, trying to reduce the total cost of ownership. We need scalable tools to get there. We need end-to-end -end security, so you don't have to fiddle around with keys. Uh, if we can get hardware out of the equation, we should have generic devices. We launched the generic node. We launched disruptively low-priced gateways to push this abundance and connectivity as a commodity. Uh, we are launching and expressing uh, uh, our vision on peering networks, the fact that actually connecting networks 
already has a huge business case in the efficiency for devices and efficiency for the network. Um, we, we're, we're, we talked about our new network server that's going to be open source today. LoRaWAN from space, thinks network in China. And there's one more thing. One more there's one thing. more thing. We, uh, we talked about, um, about this thing. And um, we're giving away 800 of these gateways to everybody here. So, so, so use this gateway as a tool to embrace the vision, uh, to bear, make this Internet of Things and to make these spirit networks and to, to, to make something that is really valuable for the, for the use case, uh, for, the, for the end user. Um, yeah, Jo and I want to thank you very much for your attention. And thanks again for being here. Thanks again for all the speakers. Thanks again for all the sponsors. Have an amazing two days. Uh, I hope I, we can talk to you all. Probably won't work, but we'll try it and uh, uh, see you around. Thank you very much. Thank you.